All right, are we live? Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I've got the coffee and this is our week off of school. It's our spring break week and we aren't going anywhere. So I thought, well, I'm just going to go live every morning and that will make me get up and get moving. <laughs> and I'm excited to talk about getting organized with you this week because it seems like getting organized is like always on the list of things to do and we never really get it done, right? And so that can be frustrating and overwhelming and discouraging, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, a big part of the frustration and the overwhelm is not having a clear definition of what it means to be organized. And so not noticing the real progress that we do make, that we are making. And so we're going to talk today about definitions and the approach and get, get really clear on what it means to be organized and what it doesn't mean also. But then every day this week, we're going to talk about one piece of being organized. So there are different areas in our homes and our lives that do need some organization in order to be effective and helpful rather than stressful. And if you've taken the free quiz on Simply Convivial, then you've seen these pieces because there is a quiz on Simply Convivial. It, it will tell you which one of these pieces you should focus on first, because we can't do all of it all at once. That's how we burn out. That's how we get overwhelmed. We try to just jump in and do everything all the way. And then we don't get anywhere except exhausted <laughs> and discouraged. So if we take things bit by bit and make progress through baby steps, that's what we're all about at Simply Convivial then we can get some traction and see progress in our efforts at organization. The majority of people feel organized only sometimes or rarely. <laughs> so if that is you, you are not alone. This is just common uh, and it's a struggle. It really is a struggle. Laura in the chat said, organization is such a struggle and an ongoing struggle, says Don. And it is. It's just the truth. And I will tell you, neither of those ladies are disorganized. But it's still a struggle. And it's still a struggle for me. I am not talking here as someone who has arrived. I am talking here as someone who has realized that there is no such thing as arriving. There's just continuing. And that's what we're going to be talking about, just continuing on the path, doing the good work set before us, knowing there's always going to be another struggle, another challenge, and that's actually a good thing. And so we're going to be talking about that this week. And I hope that you are encouraged and motivated to continue working at it instead of feeling discouraged or frustrated because it's a struggle or a challenge thinking that that means that you're doing something wrong or that organization's not possible for you. Here we go, we have slides. This whole slide deck is for the whole week. So uh, today I moved some of these slides up, so we're just gonna give a bit of a, an overview. But at the end, I'll share the slide deck and you'll get that by email. So. We're talking about organization this week. And like I said earlier, we often feel like we're the only ones having these struggles, but that's not true. So raise your hand in the chat or leave a comment telling, you know, whether or not any of these or all of these fit the bill for you and describe you. You really want to get organized, but when you really think about it or maybe try to make your lists, you aren't even sure what that really means. Like if you achieve it, if you were to picture what it means and what it looks like, what it feels like to get organized, then what would that mean? What, what would that look like and feel like? 
it's unclear. Or you do get organized or you think that you are organized, but then it never seems to stick. It just goes away. It's, it's momentary and fleeting, those moments of feeling organized or thinking that you're organized. And you're like, well, was I really not organized? If I was organized, wouldn't I stay that way? But it just never stays. It never sticks. Um, or you're never sure if you've quite reached it. Like, can I say I'm organized? I don't know. And a part of that is knowing what does it really mean? Or just being organized just seems impossible. You think, well, some people can. I've tried. I just can't. All of these are super common for all women. <laughs> and I'm going to blame some of that on media because if organization, because organization is a industry now, you know, we've got magazines, whole TV networks, uh, all kinds of products out there where if they can make you feel like organization is just beyond where you're at now, then you will be likely to buy their thing or keep tuning in or keep getting their magazine to take that next step or to finally arrive and get there. And so that feeling of it being just out of reach, but almost, but that you're you can almost feel it, but you don't quite have it. That's the kind of emotion that gets us to buy things. And so it really is cultivated. And that's why many of us feel that way. And then because organization is, is this lofty or just out of reach state that other people have on the TV shows, on Pinterest, in the magazines, on the commercials, it's, it's more of an image and a feeling than an actual state. It's not concrete. So we don't really, we can't really say if we are organized or not because it hasn't been defined that clearly. So that's a part of what actually is keeping us frustrated is that, you know, like this picture here, unless our home always looks good enough to pin on Pinterest or post on Instagram or be made into a magazine spread, we think we still have a ways to go. And that's not what it means to be organized. <laughs> so here is what organization is in concrete real life terms that fit our homes and family life and that is achievable. Um, but we'll talk about the achievable with work and ongoing work. It, organization is not a state that you achieve and check off. And from that point, everything else is amazing and wonderful and easy. Organization doesn't mean that you've done all the things so that now life is easy. And I think that's what I spent my 20s <laughs> looking for and trying for. Uh, the, the point from which I would be set up and good to go. And now everything's smooth sailing because my house is in order and my life is in order and then we'll be good. And that's not the way that life goes. <laughs> I'm going to be 40 this year. And um, I would say that I'm organized. But my house and even my planner, my anything is never looking magazine worthy. Let me tell you, we're, we're working on a home build right now. We're going to be building a custom home. And so I'm looking at all, all, of, all kinds of photos, you know, like this one, like inspiration and like style and all of that, but <laughs> it's never going to actually look that way. <laughs> not after we, not after we move in. <laughs> So we have to get really clear on what it means and, and take our expectations down a notch from what the marketing has 
uh, built it up as. So organization is giving everything a home, putting everything in its home regularly. Not everything's always in its home, but it has a home and regularly we put things back in their homes. So that's going to entail some decluttering and it's going to entail probably some container purchasing and maybe even container labeling, but it really just means having a space, a place for things and then putting them in their place. And it doesn't have to be matchy matchy containers and what we have space for and use for varies from family to family, home to home. And there isn't uh, like one right list of things to do. I don't know. I was browsing YouTube the other day and seeing all kinds of stuff like 50 things I never buy anymore, or I got rid of these 30 things and don't didn't even miss them. And all these kind of minimalist things. And decluttering is good. We should get rid of things that we don't really use and don't really need, but they tend to collect. That's just life. It's entropy. Things tend toward chaos. We, you know, things come into our home and we need to go through regular siftings and sortings and asking ourselves, do we really need this? Do I have the space for it? Make the space for it, put it away. But a part of the allure of minimalism is this idea that if I if I do it, if I go minimalist, then I won't have to deal with stuff anymore. Then life will be easy. Then I'll be organized. And it's always, uh, you know, just one more step to the promised land. <laughs> but there is no salvation in minimalism. And with families um, and hospitality or, you know, homeschooling, whatever we have going on actually requires stuff. And, you know, for now, anyway, we have a lot of stuff in America. And so for one, we have to be responsible with that and determine if we actually need it and actually have space for it. But also we need to cultivate gratitude and not discontent and blame our blessings for our frustration. <laughs> right? So if we have the resources to live a full, active, effective life with our families and our communities, then that's something to be grateful for and not resent. And it does require management. And that is our calling. We are to tend our space, steward our stuff. And so, yes, our lives as homemakers will be occupied with dealing with stuff. And that's actually not a problem. That's just our calling. It's a piece of our responsibility at home. It's not a problem. <laughs> so give everything a home, put everything in its home regularly, know where things are. That's a part of giving it a home. Then you know where it is. And then you are able to find it when you need it. If you can find something that you need readily, then you're organized. And that includes like finding the note that you took. It includes finding, um, you know, information for um, when something is like calendar things is a some things belong on a calendar as a space, and that's a place where you find it. Um, and it includes things like finding the tax document when you need it, and it involves finding that particular casserole dish when you need it, being able to get the Instant Pot quickly and easily when you need it. There are all kinds of spaces and places and things that we manage, but basically being organized means when you need something, you know where it is and you can get it pretty easily. Uh, the more often you need something, the faster it should be to find it. 
And the less frequently you need something, the more out of the way you can put it. And, you know, if you can still, you know where it is anyway, it might be a little bit of a project to get it out, but you know that it doesn't take you by surprise. Uh, someone in the chat says, I guess my stuff is an organized mess then. Yes, that's totally possible. <laughs> Naomi says, hey, with that definition, I think I might be organized. There we go. You know, really so much of our frustration, I think, is just having an uh, overblown imaginary ideal picture of what organized must be. And we're working for something that's never going to be a reality because we're working for an image that's been fed to us by the media, by marketers, that is unachievable for family life. And we would have to get rid of all the children <laughs> to have the home that uh, is is described as organized. And um, the children are more important than the way the home looks, right? The home is for the children, not the children for the home. So our home should be a tool to use, a stage on which life is lived. And that means that it's going to be messy. And it means there's going to be stuff. And it means it's not going to be pristinely beautiful all the time you know, or pristinely beautiful at any time, depending on your decorating ability, which like that right there, on that's the extent of my decorating ability. That's like as, as good as it gets. <laughs> I'm very pleased with myself for that. And that's <laughs> so... When we have a better definition of organized, then we can see the progress that we've already made and we can see the momentum we already have and we can build on that. But the other problem with the way organization is usually treated or decluttering is that it is talked about as if it's a level that you achieve and then you're good to go. When in reality, we are going to need to be continually organizing and continually decluttering because life is not static and it's not supposed to be static. Life changes. Our families change. Kids grow. Kids even leave. <laughs> more kids come in, you know, we're, we're at different seasons and stages and all of the, the family changes bring changing stuff, changing management needs. And so um, we will be always organizing and always planning and always decluttering. It's, it's something that we just need to get good at not something that we need to achieve. It's something we need to practice. And as we practice, it's a skill that we grow in, but we never stop practicing it. And it's not something like we have to achieve a certain state and then we'll be able to practice the skill after we get a certain, to a certain level. It's more like we just, it's just another step. It's just another step and we keep practicing and we keep practicing. And um, sometimes it feels like we're not getting anywhere. But over time, we learn and we get better at it. And every step along the way was worthwhile. It was all a part of learning and practicing and organizing. So yeah. And Jen says, my idea of organization and my children's ideas of organization differ significantly. <laughs> That's the truth. That is always going to be the case, too. Just saying. My oldest is 18 and out on his own, down to a nine-year-old. At this point, they all have places that they are responsible for keeping track of and managing. And the way that they do that 
is not the way that I would do that. And we have a certain standard. Like I said, no try again <laughs> if it's like stuff on the floor or whatever. But, you know, the way I organize something is not the same way that my husband does either. And the way I organize something is not the same way that my friend does either. But, but it's not achieving a particular look. Organizing is just giving things homes putting them in their homes, knowing where they are when you need them. So there is room for different practices and different looks and different styles. And it takes practice. So it's okay for kids to practice and not just do things our way too. All right, we're going to go back to the slides real quick and I'm going to talk about how to get clarity for yourself on the next steps for, for getting organized. So the title of this workshop is Five Steps to Organize Your Life. And today we're talking about clarity, about really defining and understanding organization so that we do not instantly fall into discouragement when we even think about the word or the project organization. I, that's a part of it. We should not think of it as a project that we're going to check off. We need to think of it as a process that we're going to be continually developing our whole life. So we need to get clarity. And these questions are in the workbook that goes along with this um, workshop, which you can find out about. And I'll talk about that more at the end. But if you just think about it and brain dump, which means just writing down your thoughts, what do you find most frustrating in your life right now? And that could be all kinds of things. But really, I think when we're trying to get organized, we're trying to tackle those things that are frustrating us, which are often um, emotional, spiritual, relational, but what's what we're actually able to tackle most is physical and so we try to come at some of those uh bigger issue frustrations through just getting control of our situation and we're really seeking control of different kinds so um it's not like i'm saying okay identify the most frustrating thing in your life right now and then you can get organized <laughs> Sometimes we just need to recognize that, okay, it's actually this deeper frustration. And I think that if I organize the closet, I'm going to feel better. <laughs> but that's not actually addressing the real problem. Or sometimes it is. It's like, it's just that this space is always cluttered with other people's things. And that makes me frustrated. I'm like, well, how could we actually deal with that without becoming an overbearing ogre? <laughs> Because sometimes when we try to get organized, that's what we become. We come, become, you know, it's it's even alliterative, an organized, overbearing ogre. And then when you picture being organized, maybe the opposite of being frustrated, what's different about yourself or your life? And what we're getting at with these questions is just like, what's going on in our heads? Because sometimes we just let our imaginations and our feelings kind of run rampant without really examining them and seeing what we can actually do about it and what's actually reasonable, what's actually biblical and reject lies and reject marketing images and reject resentment and move forward with gratitude and with love and kindness. Doing that takes examination. And so some these questions might not seem like a part of getting organized, but it really is. Because when we're trying to get organized, we are often trying to fix internal problems by external projects. So if you think about these questions, you will probably get some kind of clarity about what you really need. And these questions, like I said, are in the workbook with space to write about them. And then what part of that picture 
if you picture being organized, right, then what part of that picture is most important to you? Or, you know, some of it will just be tangential, but what's really essential or most important to you? Like just one piece, like if I had that, and then of the picture might be the most important thing, might not be, but what's most attainable right now? Like what's within reach? What could you actually do? And what part of that picture could you really work toward with clarity, with purpose, with knowing exactly what to do next? Now we're going to go through some of these questions and tackle the four things that we have to organize in order to be organized, right? To know what we have, to give those things homes, and to know where things are. There are kind of four different categories of things that we have to organize. And so every day this week, we're going to talk about one of those areas. And then on Saturday, we'll do a Q&A. So tomorrow, we're going to talk about spaces. So this is the obvious stuff component, decluttering, giving things homes, and just the stuff. And then there are notes, all kinds of notes, information. We have to organize information. And so that will be Wednesday. On Thursday, we're going to talk about our attitude. So that's more of that internal self-talk um, self-management piece that we often want to ignore because we think that dealing with the stuff will deal with our attitude, but it's really flipped. It's our attitude that will deal with the stuff or not, <laughs> well or not. So we have to dig into that attitude piece. And then finally on Friday, we will talk about plans and how to make and organize and execute plans effectively. So I am looking forward to this workshop. All of them, each one of them every morning is going to be about 20-ish minutes. Today's is a little bit longer as I set the stage. The workbook has pages and even a checklist, brain dump prompts for each one of these days. So for all five. And so you can get that in exchange for sharing about this series. You can share it on Facebook, on Instagram, on Messenger. I don't know how people, by email, <laughs> by text. So you can use any of the share buttons that are here on the page. And I don't know exactly what they look like, but you could also just copy the link up at the top, the URL bar, and share that by text or messenger with a friend or by email or share about a thought or share a picture or share a screenshot here on Instagram and invite people to come on over. And then if you email support at simplifiedorganization.com, I will get that workbook to you after you share it. So there's still more slides to go but the rest of them will come on the other days and I will share the whole package on Friday afterwards. So thank you so much for joining. You can keep the comments coming. You can ask a question and I will see you tomorrow.